So they're working on a technology that was discovered um, in the 80s. Uh, and uh, during that time, uh, people were doing uh, research <laughs> on animals such as llamas um, and other types of animal, mammals like that. And those, uh, those uh, animals have um, molecules of proteins in their respiratory tract um, that are called nanobodies. So I think a term that makes a lot of sense to all of us is antibody and we know those as proteins who help us with our immune system in terms of helping block um, pathogens or viruses and bacteria that can cause problems for us um, and a nanobody is actually nano just means small um, and so really what these nanobodies are are mini kind of antibodies that kind of they have that same function of the ability to block some sort of a pathogen, whether it be a virus, in this case, uh, CoV-2, uh, SARS-CoV-2, and um, stop it from being able to interact with the cells that are in our respiratory tract. Um, I think really what they've done so far is they mostly have done this in, uh, in the test tubes. Uh, I think they're, they're, you know, they had, I think, like 200,000 from the, the articles that I've read, 200,000 of these nanobodies kind of sitting on a shelf. Um, and so they started to take those nanobodies and screen them against the virus to see if they were able to block the virus. And I think they, I, they probably, I think they mentioned two or three that seemed very, uh, very favorable in terms of being able to Block, block or attach to the virus. As we know with coronavirus, uh, one of the most important functions it has are those spikes that, that actually give it its name. Uh, corona means crown. And so the virus has uh, spikes around the outside of it. And what happens when you uh, use nanobodies, uh, they can attach to those spikes and block those spikes from attaching to the receptor, which is an ACE receptor, on the human cell. So um, it, they work a little bit like a kind of a sheath where they might kind of just block the, the two areas on the virus and the human cell that come together. But they've also found that they act a little bit like a lock on, um, on some of those uh, spikes that aren't yet open. Um, and so they, you know, they kind of, if a spike is closed and not able to, to grab on to that receptor on the human cell, um, it, it'll just lock it into that closed position. So they feel really confident that because there's actually a couple of different mechanisms that these nanobodies are able to use in defense against the coronavirus, uh, that, that they're, they're going to see some good outcomes when they start taking this um, to humans um, and to, um, to other uh, studies that they'll need to do. The, um, the other thing about the nanobodies uh, that's really pretty cool is, like I said, they're, they're small molecules. They're very small proteins. Um, and so it's really easy for the scientists to um, change the sequence um, and, and make genetic alterations in those nanobodies that make them far more receptive uh, to those spike proteins. And so they have uh, genetically um, engineered some of these and have really shown that there's a really incredible um, uh, function uh, that's greatly increased in terms of, of seeking out those antibodies and, and being able to perform the functions um, that I described before. So they're very hopeful that this will work once they get it out of the test tube. Um, and it sounds like they're having a lot of interest from commercial partners who would be interested in, in perhaps marketing this. The other things that they've been doing in the lab is to be sure that, uh, you know, how are we gonna get these to people? 
Um, and it looks like they've done a couple of different um, settings where they're either using an, aer an aerosol, uh, kind of like that you might get uh, from a nebulizer if you were in asthmatics. So, you know, that kind of mist that you might inhale, uh, as well as some sort of a nasal spray where you, it might be something that you put up your nose, um, you know, kind of if you, you were using a nutty pot or, 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 or saline nasal spray where you might spray it into your nose and then it would kind of coat your respiratory tract that way. Uh, so they're feeling that this might actually be something uh, that people could buy over the counter um, and use as yet another form of like personal protective equipment um, in terms of protecting your respiratory tract. I mean, right now, you know, we essentially have the caveman approach because that's all we have. And so we're asking everybody to wear masks to protect their respiratory tract. Uh, this would be um, a tiny molecule that would essentially have that same effect of protecting the respiratory tract um, but do it with a once a day uh, product. You know, um, again, I, I don't see masks becoming obsolete in, in the next uh, little bit. Uh, it's going to take a while for them to do these uh, human trials. I know uh, people are becoming very, very familiar with what it takes to get some sort of a drug or a vaccine to market in terms of phase one, phase two, um, and, and then phase three trials, which, you know, really show how well something works. So, you know, there's, there's time, um, but they in a pretty record time have gotten to a place where they've got a lot of information and data and are very excited about moving that forward.